This is Hero of Sparta. During the first year of his epic campaign, he has already reclaimed two cities from rebel forces, showing those uncultured heathens the true might of the sons of Apollo. The Macedonians would be next to feel the strength of Sparta. Although soon, Hero will wish for the days where rebels and Macedonians were his only troubles, for soon an even greater threat was nearing the horizon. Carrying on the same turn we left off on, Hero besieges Corinth, building three siege towers, two to use and one spare to show off to the Macedonians. There is a sizeable force within the city, larger than what Hero has dealt with before, however they will still be no match for his army. With nothing else to do, we end the turn. We are now officially at war with the Romans, and our treasury is still nose diving through the red. Having used up their movement points fleeing last turn, the Brutii Peace Armada has not moved, allowing us to attack this turn. However, before doing so, we will move some of our own fleet into position to catch the cowardly Romans, with Polydorus continuing the vigil over the Roman mainland. Now, we are ready to attack. The Romans were no match, and predictably fled towards our waiting fleet. Fleeing again, the Romans had escaped their fate this turn. For now, we reposition to catch them next time. Once more, we end the turn. During the summer, Cleomenes found a promising young lad and proposed he joined the family. While Teleos was not spectacular, he was good enough to occupy and manage frontier cities. The Macedonians have started sending some of their armies down south. Perhaps they intend to reinforce Corinth when the siege begins. Up north, our diplomat continues searching for new trading partners. In his rush to find new friends, he misses a Dacian diplomat by mere metres. Feeling too tired from his trek, Eusilides would have to wait until next year before talking to his fellow diplomat. Finally, after two years of pursuit, the Brutii Peace Armada has finally been sunk. That will teach those pesky Romans. The, sea is out. the rest of our fleet continues to patrol around Ships Italy. Ready. Yes, sir. Set sail. Ships ready. Yes, sir. With nothing else requiring our attention, the turn is ended. Pirates outnumbering Admiral Polydorus two to one think they have a chance at defeating our Admiral, but are quickly proven otherwise. More Macedonians have come to join the party around Corinth, a family member in this instance. However, none of these armies have yet to enact against Hero, or a poorly defended Athens, which would have been the ideal outcome. An open field battle would have been the ideal conditions for Hero's army, more so for the archers. However, it is not to be, so Hero begins the assault on Corinth. Damasos, the leader of the city, is no one special. While he does not have any traits or retinue to help his army, he doesn't have anything that detracts either. Corinth is not a complex city, as illustrated here. There are straightforward paths leading from the gates to the plaza from each direction. We will be using the east gate and the west gate. They are both straight paths and not as well defended on the walls. We will have two small teams with siege towers on each side, with the bulk of the army remaining to the north to keep the main part of the Macedonian forces there. Team West is our secondary team, consisting of one unit of Spartans and one unit of Cretans. Team East will be our primary besieging force, with two units of Spartans, one unit of Cretans and Hero following up on the rear. They be lined to the wall. Praise the gods! The siege towers are 
at the walls. Now the real fight begins. Whilst Team West steadily makes their way around the city to their approach point. Now all Team East needs to do is unlock the gate and avoid being hit by the archers while they're sitting ducks upon the wall. Our soldiers have captured the walls! Now is the time to press on and capture this place! Now with possession of the gate, the Spartans retreat back while they wait for the archers to leave. Team West finally make it to the wall. With only a unit of militia hoplites as the opposition, the Spartans work on unlocking the gates to get their archers in. Soon, the Eastern archers have finally been whittled down enough for the rest of Team East to come into the city unscathed. The Cretans, however, thought that things were going a bit too easy and needed a challenge. They started shooting down the Macedonian archers from behind the gatehouse with no visibility of said archers. Team West's Cretans keep a cool head as what remained of the militia hoplites approach their lightly armoured bodies. However, it turned out the Macedonians don't appreciate 147 arrows to the face and quickly broke and ran for the plaza. With all opposition cleared from the streets, both sides could now simultaneously march onto the plaza. Selective fire from the Cretans draw Macedonians off the plaza and into the, hopefully ready, Spartans. The light lancers are the first to be drawn off, going back and forth on who to charge at before picking a direction. Their indecisiveness only prolonged their inevitable charge into death. The march under the plaza continues, gaining new advantageous positions for the Cretans to fire from. The main group of Spartans line up just in time for the confrontation against the militia hoplites. Although losing a man in the skirmish, they show the militia who the superior hoplites were. The plaza was now clear. It was time for the final push.
the Macedonian general has come out of hiding to grace us with his presence. Before just as quickly throwing away his life and demoralising his entire force. Hero comes in at the end to help mop up any loose stragglers. Now we need only hold the plaza for one more minute. The Macedonians weren't going to make it through a solid wall of Spartans. We would make sure of that. God be praised! This victory is surely not that of mortals like us! Unfortunately, during the general's charge, two Spartans valiantly fought to the death. However, one that was presumed dead before was found clinging to the last of his life and made a full recovery. The population of Corinth is exterminated for the same reason as Athens. We just can't support a large growing population just yet. However, we have captured a very important wonder that will be critical to the stabilisation of our economy. The statue of Zeus at Olympia. With this magnificent golden ivory statue, our settlements were forever lovers and we gain a 30% addition to public order in every settlement, before settling to a constant 10% in four turns. This additional percentage almost negates the unhappiness caused by the high tax rates, and having a high garrison to population ratio, we'll be able to keep the taxes rather high for some time to come. And Kaidonia is feeling happy and safe with their 240, somewhat experienced peasants. Now, Hero can move back onto the field and deal with the rest of the Macedonians imposing on our territory, lest they get any ideas. Deleos makes his new home in Corinth with a unit of peasants. His end goal will be Athens to get a proper education from their renowned academies once the roads are finally cleared. Our fleets continue to patrol around the Italian peninsula, and occasionally using their telescopes that wouldn't be invented for another 1,850 years to spy on the Roman activities, of which the Brutii are looking rather empty. Hero continues to push back against the Macedonians, and our diplomat finally makes it to another town and secures trade rights and some map information. He then continues his chase after the Dacian diplomat. Yes, Finances are starting to look good. We only need to generate another 1,000 denarii to break even and eventually come out of debt. With no more movement points for Hero, we must go to the next turn. Hero continues his attack on the Macedonian captains, and unfortunately the general retreats onto a boat, however we are finally able to pin down the smaller of the two remaining armies. Beginning the battle with his favoured speech about breakfast, Hero arranges his army into what will become the standard formation for the rest of the campaign. A row of Spartans at the front with the ends curved inwards, protecting a line of Cretans behind them, with cavalry making up the rear positions. Our foes, levy pikemen and light lancers, will be our first challengers on the open field.
After a slow and steady march, we finally get into range for the archers. And the levy pikemen are decimated in minutes. The cavalry don't fare much better either. With 98% of the Macedonians killed, it is safe to end the battle, as the army will disappear off the map. Now, for the final army that remains in our way. We can't continue north until it is gone. This one is larger, although we have Athens and its two units of peasants backing us up. The standard formation is set up, and the rest of the army is sent to hide in the forest, so the AI focuses solely on Hero and his army. Somehow, we were able to hide 2,032 men and 432 horses behind about 18 trees. With everyone hidden and in positions, we could begin. The Macedonians were further down the hill than originally expected. However, we still have the height advantage even if we had to move. A secondary force is moved from the forest to sandwich the Macedonian forces and make them spread out between the two armies. The Macedonians' heavy cavalry had potential to cause a world of hurt if they charged at the wrong place at the wrong time, so ideally we wanted to avoid that. With their cavalry separated to the back, they'll make easy pickings for the approaching archers. Soon, everyone is in position and the Cretans can begin firing. The Macedonians try to charge their cavalry, but are quickly turned back before they get anywhere near. Their horsey flanks contain perhaps one too many arrows. The Cretan archers, using godlike power, speed and accuracy, tear the Macedonian army apart, leaving no man spare. Another cavalry charge is thwarted by the Cretans. The riders, seeing Apollo in many, many duplicate human forms, were quickly overcome with fear and reverence, and fled. Soon, all that is left is the heavy cavalry, and for some reason, perhaps seeing the folly in further fighting, just stood still and accepted their deaths by a rain of arrows. before being chased away by Hero. This is a victory fit for the gods, a day of triumph to mark Those nine Macedonians would go back to their homes to tell tales about how they had been completely slaughtered by just a few units of squishy archers that were perhaps more than what they appeared to be. Now we could continue north in safety. We had only need capture one more city to restore our economy. In the north, our diplomat continues to try and find some Dacians in one form or another. 